Hello, hello, I'm PJ Scribbles. I'm a professional illustrator that's been using Clip Studio Paint for over four years. And today, I'm gonna teach you how to master Clip Studio Paint's reference layers so you can use them in your workflow. I also made a text version of this tutorial, which you can check out in the link in the description. So what can you do with reference layers? You'll be surprised to know that reference layers are used for many cool features in Clip Studio Paint. Some examples include the freeform gradient tool, paint bucket settings for cleanup work so your shading and effects stay within the lines. For you painters out there, you'll definitely have some fun with the colorize feature, and for our comic artists, get excited because we'll also go over how to use reference layers and a 3D model to create custom logos that can be adjusted in 3D space. There's a little bit for everyone packed into this tutorial, so stick around and let's get started. So what are reference layers? Reference layers are a layer setting option that allows you to fill and draw on other layers while referring to a specific set of layers or a singular layer. Reference layers are a super handy tool to add to your digital toolbox, so before we jump into using them, let's talk about how to set them up. There are a few ways to set up reference layers. With the layer you want to set as a reference selected, hover over to the top menu and go to Layer, then go to Layer Settings and click on Set as Reference Layer. You can also right-click directly on the layer you want to set as a reference, go to the layer setting options like before, and click on the set to reference layer option again. You've probably never noticed the three lines next to the layer tab. If you click on it, it'll also bring up the menus previously shown. Fun fact, the three lines icon is commonly called the hamburger menu, and it's a space-saving mechanism that is used across many different applications and websites. Think of it as an extra options button. Now that I've pointed it out, take a look across your workspace. They're everywhere, isn't that neat? I'd like to introduce you to one final way that'll be much faster and more practical to use in your workflow. Uh, you might be acquainted with these icons in your layers panel. If you mouse over any of them, you'll get some text that reads what each one does. From left to right, we have clip to the layer below, set as reference layer, set as draft layer, lock layer, and lock transparency. Today we'll only be focusing on the reference layer button. So let's get right into using the freeform gradient tool. Uh, before we use it, let's set our line art layers as reference layers. You can either set the whole line art folder as a reference, or you can set multiple layers as a reference by holding down the control key. It's important to note that you need to hold down control and select your layers all at once, otherwise when you set one layer and then move to the next, it won't set them both as reference layers, but rather switch between the most recent layer you've set as a reference. You can set any kind of layer as a reference layer, think vector, 3D, tone, and more, all except for correction layers, so watch out for that. Now we can go ahead and find our tool. Don't worry if you can't find it right away. Click on the gradient tool and in the subtool menu you'll find it there. We'll be using the normal paint tool in this example. In the tool property menu, look at the section that says refer multiple and click on the reference layer icon. Now you can use a brush and put down the colors you want to use. I'm using the G-Pen, but I set the anti-aliasing at the lowest. Uh, the freeform gradient tool doesn't work well with brushes that have a fading effect like this. Now that I've placed the colors that I want to use, I can click and drag and create my gradients. I encourage you to try out all kinds of shapes and patterns. I'm sure you'll absolutely love playing with this tool. I do want to mention that the default settings of this tool may not give you the results that you're looking for. Depending on the artwork you're using, you'll have to tinker with the tool settings. I personally turn off the close gap and turn the tolerance settings all the way up so the fill doesn't leave any pixel fragments. This is a super quick and easy sky I made using this tool to give you even more ideas and I hope this gives you some inspiration for your next project. Now, let's say you want to add an airbrush effect to your artwork but don't want the colors to escape your line work. There are a few ways you can approach this. Number one, you could use a clipping layer on top of your flats layer. And another way is to use some handy settings on your paint bucket tool. Yes, that's right, you can use your paint bucket tool as a giant eraser. With your line art set as reference, select the Refer to Other Layers paint bucket, then select the transparent square underneath your colors. Next, in the tool property settings, go to Refer Multiple, click the Refer to Other Layers icon, then click the plus icon. This will show some extra settings you can add to your paint bucket tool. From there, click the icon that says Exclude Editing Layer. 
Now you can do your shading and effects and simply click and the paint bucket will erase all the overflown areas. You can also set a lineless layer as a reference and use this tool to create shading and other lighting effects. I would suggest turning off the area scaling if you find the paint bucket taking away too much of your color, but this really depends on the effect you're going for and the drawing that you're using. If you want to save these settings for later without having to worry about changing your settings over and over again for different purposes, right click on your paint bucket tool and hit duplicate sub tool so now you'll always have a copy. You can also change the name by clicking on Subtool Settings. After setting a new tool with these settings, I recommend resetting the original paint bucket to default so you can use it normally like before. This clock icon will reset all of your settings to default, so if you ever worry that you've messed up settings on any tool or brush, you can click on this button to fix it. For those who love to paint but are a little intimidated by the blank white space of the canvas, uh, Clip Studio Paint offers a fantastic tool that automatically fills your lines. Again, we'll set our line art layer to reference, and then in a layer underneath, you can place down the colors you want to use. This tool has a phenomenal understanding of lights and shadows, and while it might not look like much at first, these colors are a perfect underpainting to work with. But what if you don't have any colors in mind? Check this out. You can colorize your work without any color hints as well. This time, select your liner and hit the option Colorize All. This is the result that I got, and I was so inspired by this color palette that I decided to render the drawing so you can fully see the creative potential this tool can provide. Automatically, the layer created by the Colorize tool will have a white fill, but if you use the paint bucket settings from earlier, you can get rid of those pesky white fills with no hassle. So far, we've talked a lot about using Reference Layer in a way that helps artwork that's already been made. And to shake things up in this next section, let's talk about making art directly using reference layers. I'll be using a 3D model in my example, but this trick works with any kind of image material. You could use stock photos or your own to create these cool silhouette images. Place the 3D model you want to use onto your canvas and position it to your liking. I recommend using a larger canvas to create a good quality image. Now, set your 3D model as a reference layer and create a new layer above. The new layer will be the one we'll use to create the silhouette. We'll be using the default Refer to Other Layers Paint Bucket tool. All you have to do is change the Refer Multiple setting to Reference Layer and we're good to go. And now you can color in the model freely like this. Once you have an image you're satisfied with, go ahead and place any text or extra details you want to include in the logo. Then fill the image with a solid color because in the next step we'll be saving this image as a PNG. I use an edited version of the Enclose and Fill Lasso tool, set the close gap to a higher setting, sometimes it'll need to be higher or lower depending on your fill needs, then set the target color to all enclosed areas including transparency, and set the area scaling to negative 0.10, and you're done. Now let's put the logo into a 3D space. With your logo saved as a PNG and in a folder you can easily find, we'll go to the Materials panel and go to the section that says Primitive. In the latest update, Clip Studio Paint has added Primitive 3D models, so if you can't see this Primitive tab in the 3D section of the Materials panel, make sure to update your program. We'll be using the Plane model, so go ahead and place it into your workspace. You'll notice a gray bar underneath the 3D model. Click on the wrench icon to bring up the settings, then go to Primitive, and turn off Show Wireframe. Next, in the Map section, click on the option that says Open, and now you can select your logo and place it onto the model. You'll notice that the logo has a tint over it. This is because we still have shadows turned on from the original 3D model, and all you have to do is turn off the Apply Light Source, and cast shadows on the ground to fix this. And we're done! Now you can adjust the logo as much as you want. Let's also talk about using reference layers for flat coloring. You can set your liner as a reference layer to easily fill your lines with other elements behind it. If you set the Refer to Other Layers Paint Bucket tool to Reference, you'll notice that the paint bucket will ignore all the extra lines across the page. And here's what it would look like with those settings turned off. 
This method is great for artwork that doesn't have any gaps, however I find that my line art is a little too complex for this method to be helpful for me. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're someone who is bothered by fills that have pixel fragments, this method tends to leave a lot of them even with higher tolerance settings. These can be super annoying if you're making color selections for shading and other effects, and I much prefer the lasso fill tool for this purpose. Now keep in mind that the lasso tool isn't perfect either, and it tends to avoid the very edges of the canvas, which you will have to fix yourself. However, in comparison, I find the lasso fill tool much more efficient and leaves a lot less cleanup work in general. I still use all the paint bucket tools and talk much more in depth about them in this tutorial, so I would check it out if you're looking for ways to cleanly color in your artwork. Another way you can use reference layers is with your selection tool. For example, if you're looking to add a pattern or texture in your artwork, you should use the Selection for Referred Layers Magic Wand tool. It's so simple to use and it's perfect for any outfit you want to fill with a material texture. Once you've made a selection with the wand tool, all I have to do is drag my material into the workspace and it'll stay within my selection. The same rules usually apply to vector layers, as there is a particular setting to have your selection recognize your vector layers. The last setting that we'll be talking about today is the Do Not Cross Lines of Reference Layer option. This can actually be applied to any and all of your brushes, which is really cool if you like this feature. If you click on the wrench icon, it will open up the subtool detail menu, go to anti-overflow, you'll notice a bunch of settings in here, including do not cross lines of reference layer, fill up to vector path, tolerance, and area scaling. Something to keep in mind is that it will cross the lines of your reference layer if the center of the brush moves outside of the reference line. Another thing is that it's not really the greatest with line art that has gaps in it. In fact, I think the lasso tool and the other paint bucket tools are so much better than these settings. However, if you wanted to add a pattern or, or any kind of clothing material from the decorations brush set. There's a lot of different ones in there, I don't know what it, you would call it. it it's, it's not just one brush, it is many. <laughs> Another thing to keep in mind is that if you do not have area scaling set on, which is another option in this menu, you will get these really ugly pixels. I hope you learned a few new tricks to use in your workflow. Thank you so much for joining me. You can also check out a text version of this tutorial, which you can save and find for later. If you want to see more of my artwork, you can find it down in the description below. And with that, I'll see you next time. Bye bye